everybody, Six Speed Dakota here, and today's project we're going to be fixing the abomination of mankind, a minivan. And today's project, unfortunately, is the dreaded fuel pump, which I know that everybody's going to love watching, but nobody's going to love doing. Because, yeah, frankly, it's a lousy job. So really, you have to drop the tank to get it, because 99.999% of fuel-ejected vehicles have their pump in the tank. So the customer supplied me with a new pump, and a new filter so now the only really special tool you're going to need for this job is a fuel line disconnect tool and that's because the filter is this guy right here which i'm going to take back so i kind of got to be careful with it he supplied me one has these barbed fittings that clip over top and what that uh, have the plastic fuel line clipped down over top and what this tool does here is it releases the little plastic clip and allows it to let go of the fuel filter. So another thing is, look on the filter and it should indicate the direction of flow. If you put it backwards, uh, your motor probably won't run too well. So how do you know you have a bad fuel pump? Well, number one, it just may not start and you won't hear the little whirring in the bottom of the tank. And in this case, you're gonna have to pardon the vacuum. And in this case, well, he drove it here and now it won't start so again. So let's see if we can give this thing a try. Didn't want to start when I, or I started, but it wasn't running too well, and then it didn't want to start again. Actually, I hear it now. Of course, it's got to work. It doesn't sound too healthy, though. There we go. Stop working. And there we go. So, obviously the fuel pump works intermittently. So I got a new fuel pump and a new filter. But that's perfect now that it's out of fuel, because now I don't have to depressurize the fuel system. It's already done for me. To start, first thing is you need to get it up on jack stands, which I have them on jack stands and just a little bit of a safety ramp there. And of course my front wheel's up on ramps here. So, how you do this is this is a return style fuel injection system, meaning that this line here, the fuel line comes up from the tank and delivers pressurized fuel. This little fuel pressure regulator right here, this little vacuum pot, as engine vacuums applied to it, allows more fuel to go back to the return side. This is called a bypass fuel return. Basically, this is a return style fuel injection. A return less style only has one fuel line feeding the fuel system. And of course, the other line doesn't exist and it's regulated down to the tank. So basically what you need to do is you need to disconnect this. It's a little bit crusty, so especially if it's been under here for a while. Ah, stupid vacuum. You need to put a piece of rubber hose on here or a piece of plastic tubing or what have you and like actually take it and suck on it at the other end and that'll release all the fuel pressure. So that's one easy way to do it. Make sure that this thing's not leaking too because ethanol fuels like to eat through the little diaphragm in there. So then, next step is we gotta drain the fuel out of the tank since it's got about a half well, a Before tank. I start to drain the fuel out of the tank, we're gonna explain how pumps wear out, how pumps go bad, and all that stuff. So this is a return style fuel injection system, meaning that the pump runs full flow up to the fuel rails all the time and whatever fuel is not needed is sent back to the tank via the fuel return line and the fuel pressure regulator. So of course it's vacuum controlled so at idle you have a lot of vacuum, not a lot of load. So the vacuum will open up the fuel pressure regulator to send fuel back to the tank. Now if you mat the throttle all of a sudden you release all the vacuum, the fuel pressure regulator shuts and allows very little fuel to go back to the tank giving you more fuel pressure, but you're using the fuel at the same time, but you're using more. So therefore, the fuel pressure stays relatively constant. And when you let off the throttle, if you snap the throttle open and shut, you'll typically see the pressure drop off if you got a fuel pressure gauge. So that's just one thing. I mean, the return less style has the, it's internally regulated inside the pump and the bypass is in the tank. So why do fuel pumps go bad and just burn out like in this case? Well, number one, getting dirt through them. Say the strainer's degraded inside the tank 
it breaks and allows the and allows dirt big particles to go through. Obviously, little fine stuff is going to get through. It's just a strainer, and that's what's going to get caught by this fuel filter here. But big chunks of stuff that'll destroy the pump. Having moisture in the fuel tank will burn the pump up, especially if it's pumping it and then sitting for long periods of time. And that's usually because of poor quality fuels or that have been sitting in a tank for a long time. Another thing is running your vehicle out of fuel. That causes the pump to run dry, and that's its coolant and lubrication, the fuel, and it burns the pump out. So, and one other thing is, if this guy's plugged, there's no pressure regulation on the back side of this fuel filter. So basically the pump's gonna work itself to death trying to pump all the fuel back up to the, up to the fuel rail. And that's another thing that burns out the pump. So prior history on this car, it's burned up two fuel pump fuses, and now they've got a higher amperage fuse in it now, and the pump finally decided to quit. Then they got it towed back home, and all of a sudden it'll start again. So, and as you can see, it's very, very intermittent. So it has to be changed, obviously. We, do, we definitely have voltage supply down there, unless there's a loose wire or something like that, which we'll definitely see when we get underneath there. But since that's all on top of the tank, we pretty much have to drop the tank anyway. So, got about half a tank, so first thing we gotta do is we gotta yank the, uh, all that fuel out of there, and I got a special tool to do so. thing we got to do is loosen off this old nasty hose clamp that holds that guy on there. Oh, stupid, stupid thing. There we So the next step we gotta do is, this is the front of the tank right here, and all the fuel lines are easy, oops, easy to access. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our suitable drain bin underneath. Because now, and make sure you wear gla safety glasses. I hope you guys can't see me on camera right now. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Oh, I hate these stupid cars. So I'm in engineering so I can design them rather than work on them. Well, clearly that's not working. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, don't have your hand anywhere near these things when they uh, when you release them. Because obviously there's some leftover fuel pressure. Oh, wow. That's dripping all over my GoPro, too. <laughs> oh, wow. That thing went off with some force. Also, be be careful trouble lights too. They cause a little bit of heat. Uh, my trouble lights actually got a fluorescent bulb in it, so I believe that was the feed line. And this guy's a return. So those are your two lines. Remember which one goes where. These are both bonded together. These are both tied together, so it's kind of intuitive to where they go. And then this guy right here is the evap purge line. Same principle, squeeze the two tabs together. Give her shit. Oh, there we go. So those are our connections, and then we have the fuel pump connector right here, which I just pulled the little tab thing off of there. So all you have to do is just squeeze the one end and yank it. Of course, this stupid thing does not want to come undone. What we might do is we might actually Drain some, drain some of the fuel out while we have the tank down. That'll make it easier to get out and we'll get back up into place. Three straps to hold the tank up. One forward, middle, and back. Now, the middle one, I don't know why it's on there. This is a pretty long tank. 
what we're going to do is we're going to pull the middle one off. The tank can still be supported by just the two. That's just for, you know, the fuel sloshes around, that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the middle strap off, and then we're going to put our jack right where that middle strap was. Now, I can just set you guys up right here. That is a 13 millimeter bolt. There it is. And I've put a little bit of WD-40 on it. And I've already cracked it loose with much frustration, of course. This is the kind of, this is one of the jobs that no matter what you do, it, uh, it still presents itself as a pain. All right, I've gotten an extension to make that a little bit easier. It's always a good idea to put a little bit of WD-40 in there. That thing's really, really stuck. You can try to use a torch, but of course I don't recommend that at all. So you can tell these stupid speed nuts right here are absolutely awful, especially if they really rust on there. Why they couldn't just weld the nut to the to the back side of the subframe, I have no idea. Cutting costs as usual, I guess. Now this is a quite a long bolt, so I'm prepared to work at it a little bit. So as you can see, I got the strap loose. Now there is a way to get it off. If I can scoot myself around here. <laughs> Now what we do is we just tilt it towards the back of the vehicle and pull it out. Now we can get our jack underneath there and jack up the tank. Stop when the jack just touches the tank. Okay, so this is the front front strap. Now, because we got the jack supporting it, we can loosen it all the way off. As you can see, the strap is already loose. The one good thing is once you get the bolt started, give it a little shot with some WD-40 or your penetrant of choice and what that'll do is that'll get some lubricant onto the rusty threads because the rusty threads are the ones that actually usually typically sit above the nut and that'll aid removing the nut anti seize works too if you can actually get in behind there we'll get the strap out because that stupid plastic tank is in the way I just lean this guy forward Tank's not sitting in a good spot right now. Okay, now this is the tricky part is what you're seeing right now is I'm trying to wrestle this tank by myself and it's quite heavy. So, just try to lower the jack gently. Now it's gonna come towards this side of the vehicle. So you're seeing everything upside down.
as you can see, by some think the cat over here. Just make sure that you keep the driver's side of the tank up for now. Oh, and that's now sitting on my leg. <laughs> and I don't really care right now because this thing is mighty heavy. Gently lower the jack. I think I'm going to need an extra hand from one of the crew inside, but there we go. Tank is out. So let's go. On, let's let's go underneath and try to take that damn pop. All right. So now you're going to see a tool that I don't usually use in my shop. That is a little broom. I really, really have no interest in running my uh, compressor right now. I've got a headache. It's loud and obnoxious, so I don't want dust everywhere. But one other thing is probably put a uh, paper towel or something in that filler neck. Also, don't drag the tank by the filler neck. You're going to break it off. Wow, there's a bunch of crap in here. Gonna brush all of this crap off so we don't get any of this in the tank. All right, so same thing as we did with the fuel lines underneath. We gotta squeeze and pull. And there goes the rest of it on the other side. Make sure you have a catch can or something on the other side. There's the fuel pump connector. Let the fish out of there. So, of course, we're not going to get lucky on this one. clips to hold the sending unit wiring to. Not sure what the new kit comes with. Nope. Guess we'll find out. to do is you see the little float on here I'm just gonna have to tilt the thing sideways and oh wow, this is all full of fuel so essentially the pump is actually inside of here inside this plastic case that's why it's all full of fuel it kind of serves as baffling because this tank really We're has about ready to put the new pump in now the kit does come with these little clips sometimes these little clips what you have to do is you have to break this little guy off and then pop the clip out and the fuel line will pop off this style you don't need it it doesn't it doesn't use that we also have a new gasket and if we look at the comparison between the two this one's pretty much the same just a hell of a lot lighter 
And of course the uh, setting unit looks a little different, but whatever. It's the one that they gave me, it's the one that's going in. It's got this little side connector on here and the main connector. So this is an aftermarket part, so they're never going to be exactly the same. You can take this stupid piece of crap and jones it. So essentially what we have to do first is we have to clean this guy out real well. There's actually water trapped in here as well. I know it's water. Oh man. It's fun lighting up those fuel soaked rags and watching them go up in flames, but this is probably actually a combination of you know, a combination of both now that there's fuel everywhere from taking that fuel line out. But I did happen to get about seven or eight gallons actually out of the tank, so it's significantly lighter. Because wrestling it back up is actually harder than pulling it down. This poor guy had to change a fuel pump on our Suburban way, way back many years ago. My dad gave it to him with a full tank. <laughs> and that's a 57 gallon tank, so he wasn't too happy. I have to change it and he was actually smaller than me. I'm only five foot nine. <laughs> so you can imagine how much fun he had doing that. All right, so now what we gotta do, is we gotta lubricate the seal. There's a couple different things you can use. You can use a little bit of oil, a little bit of grease, a little bit of WD-40. A little bit of grease should do. So we're just gonna put a light coat. Because if you tear this seal, now this thing's neoprene, so it won't really get attacked by the grease. And this is a water-based grease too. So it'll dry out pretty quickly when not in the presence of a whole ton of other grease. Or biodegradable, not water. Water based, my bad. All we want to do is prevent from tearing that seal. So we're going to use the, we're going to put it on the pump. Try to get around the strainer. We're going to have to go around that. Around the strainer. Whatever, it'll just dissolve in the fuel. So remember that the fuel lines pointed back that way. All right, now that's also make sure right here in these two tabs that the uh, they don't get caught, so that the seal doesn't get caught in there. And what we'll do is we'll gently slide it in there. And this looks like, no, maybe not. It actually looks like this guy is spring-loaded, which does make sense. I mean, this is a universal, basically fits all of the above. Actually, come to think of it, the old one did it too. Notice, this guy's spring-loaded. It keeps this guy sitting on the bottom of the tank where there's always fuel. And look how nasty this thing is. This thing's probably plugged solid. That's probably one of the reasons why this pump burned up. I'll throw it in the box here. All right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our plastic ring and we're gonna clean it off. Even though it's not gonna be seen, it's just gonna be professional. I think this is a futile effort because my hands are so dirty. It's every time I grab the ring in a different spot, it's just going to get all dirty again. Let's pull our wire through it. And we're going to orient the, the pickup tubes in the right direction. Try not to get this guy cross-threaded here. 
spin that ring on. Now, as long as you can get this thing fairly tight, there's no point in hammering that sucker on there. Just make a mess. Give it the next guy that's got to do this. As long as that thing's tight, I mean, it's just plastic. Now you'll notice that actually one fitting is bigger than the other. That's because that's the feed line, and that's the return line. The return line obviously delivers less fuel back to the tank, so therefore it doesn't need to be as big. This guy here plugs into this little pressure sensor here. Now in some cases there may be a spot where you have to put a pressure sensor in. I'm not sure where it is on this one, but it's this vehicle does not have it. Therefore, it's not really necessary. Snap that guy down on there. Put that connector down in there like that. These clips can be a real pain in the ass sometimes. There we go. So we have both our fuel and our fuel return. And we have our net line sitting there. Now, to temporarily shove that guy underneath there, it's quite a lot lighter actually than it was before. And now we're going to change the fuel pump or fuel filter. All right, so here we go. So here's our fuel filter. I made sure I have my GoPro far away from it this time. And so we got this hose clamp here and these two fuel lines. Push the damp tank out of the way. Now, same thing, you just squeeze these two little clips in. So push forward. These things can kind of stick on, so Try push them forward a little bit. Push these two clips in. And they should come off. There we go. There's one of them. Same thing on the engine side. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this hose clamp. And of course, it's going to put up a fight, <laughs> like everything else this job has done to me. <sighs> and I'm not entirely sure what it's caught on. <laughs> oh, I see. There's actually a little hook on the front. There we go. Now you gotta get that filter around. I wonder. I wonder how dirty that thing actually is. Alright, so we got our new one. As we can see right there, it indicates the direction of flow. So that goes towards the motor. So pretty much you can see where the capped end is on that side, same as it came out. All right. See, there we go. I'm gonna push that forward so it sits in that little hook. Clip the fuel line in. And clip the delivery line in. 
and then clamp this guy back in. Stupid. I'm gonna snug this guy down. You don't want the uh, filter to really be able to move in there. That's eh, not bad actually. Now don't complain about what kind of filter it is because the it's actually the customer's part that he bought. All right, so now we got the fuel filter in. Well, let's put the pump back in. Put the tank back in. Come on. Yeah, I'd recommend doing this with another person. <clears throat> oh, there we go. Sometimes a little hand wrestling's all it needs. Even though this tank has like a splash of fuel in the bottom, it is still really bloody heavy though. The other problem is it's pretty cold out here. So of course rubber isn't as malleable, especially if they're plastic lines. Just give it a good shot of WD-40 in there. Ain't gonna hurt anything. So this guy is the guy that goes on there, so we'll pull that guy out. Funny once you get them off, how easy they are to put back on, though. If I could actually remember how I got this stupid thing out. It's funny how much easier it goes in.
just want to eat some dinner. <laughs> and call this guy, tell him to pick up his soccer mom mobile. So I filled up the fuel with the two jerry cans. And now let's give this thing a try. Hey, there we go. Remember it had to get fuel up through the line and I just changed the filter, so. Oh my God. All right, take two. Now the fuel sender works. I just banged on the tank a couple of times. It must have been stuck in there. We do a snap throttle, and it should rev up immediately. Last time I was hesitating and sputtering. Sounds pretty good. Oh, I almost had a mini freak out there when the fuel sender was on empty. All right. So let's get this thing off the jack stands, take it for a test. All right, so let's go for a drive. Go into reverse, there we go. I'm not going to pick sides about Ford, Chevy, Dodge, or whatnot. Honestly, this pump really wasn't that bad. Usually how bad a pump is, is dictated by how rusty everything is, since this is a plastic tank, is actually not bad. So, here we go. Well, it's too bad that my GoPro is dead because the camera just took a bit of a, a fall. So if we if we bat it, wind it right out, this thing should not stumble at all or fall on its face or anything. And back before when you just would rev it, it would stumble a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely working. That's 3.8 motors, not great either. So I'm not expecting it to have a ton of power, but as long as the motor's not stumbling and falling on its face, it's not like it's got a lot of power or anything like that. Wide open throttle. Definitely, definitely snaps nicely. So we definitely know that, that pump is working. If we had, if the if the vehicle is stumbling and running rough and falling on its face, then we know that it was that it has low fuel pressure, which is another issue. Didn't bother to do fuel pressure testing on this one. It wasn't really necessary, since it was quite obvious what the problem was. <laughs> Wow. All right. So what do we learn at the end of all this? Doing a fuel pump is not necessarily a very fun job. But really, I started work on this thing probably about three hours ago, and the job, including replacing the fuel filter, bills 2.7. So, really, it's not that bad working on my garage floor. I thought that was pretty good. It's a little cold in here, you're gonna have to excuse me. That's one of the things is those lines are a little bit difficult to get off because it's so cold in here. Um, oh boy. 
I got company. Anyhow, the high point of it all is that uh, if you do this job yourself, you save yourself a ton of money. I mean, he got the part online and uh, saved himself a ton of money. The part was almost $400. So, it makes sense since he got it off of, I, I'm not going to speculate, but I believe it was Rock Auto. Got it for 100 And, uh, you know, about three hours labor to put it in, really. And that and the fuel filter. And you know what? It's not really that bad. The thing is, pulling the tank down is a lot easier than putting it back up. So, pulling it down with a half a tank of fuel really wasn't that hard. But putting it back is extremely difficult, especially if it's just me here. So you can get more of me in the camera. Especially because it's just me here. It's tough to push the tank and hold it up into place. My shoulder's really sore from doing that, and I even had the jack there. You know, it would be nice to have my little cousin helping me like use the jack and whatnot, but unfortunately he's in Hawaii right now. So anyhow, it's done, and I can call the guy and say it's done. Thank God. You know, not a fun job. Definitely on the scale of on a scale of one to five, or no, let's do it on a scale of one to ten, for the average do-it-yourselfer, I would put this at a, about a seven and a half. And the reason being is because you'd be fairly mechanically inclined, and it's not an easy job, especially when you're doing it yourself. I definitely recommend having a buddy. So that's my little spiel aside. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, it's it's a little bit of a rough one to film. My GoPro mount broke. I believe that's because a bunch of fuel dripped all over it. So another lesson you can learn is don't put, GoPro, don't put fuel on your GoPro mounts. My GoPro case and everything itself is okay, but I just noticed that the thing broke right off. Whatever, I'll just get a new mount for it. They're not that expensive. Anyhow, I'm Six Speed Dakota, coming to you from my garage. And remember, you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Six Speed Dakota. And Twitter at 6 Speed Dakota, and there I post new videos and all that kind of stuff. If you want to ask me a car question, it's a fairly involved one. And please, if it's a fairly involved one, please ask me on Facebook. Like, like my Facebook page and send me a message there. Or send me a PM on YouTube, because I can't really fit a big description of stuff into a 500 word or 500 character comment. It's a little bit difficult. If this is a simple question, then fine. Yeah, post it in the comments. I, I read every comment. I answer them all. Uh, you know, most of them, at least. If they're questions, I'll definitely answer them. And uh, yeah, so if you like this video, like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, got a lot more videos like this coming up. I got my ATV here is not looking too happy. My sister's friend crashed it into a tree stump so that's going to be one of the next videos coming up so a little bit of uh, foreshadowing on that so hopefully i'll get parts by the uh, end of the weekend but anyhow so take it easy everybody thank you for watching